Okay, so now that we're working with uh, these things uh, in Android, one of the first uh, thing that we need to know is like, we, we got the basics, we can make a layout, we can make UI, we can add logic to it, all uh, fine and dandy, but uh, things start getting haywire when, you know, uh, you, you encounter uh, errors and you can encounter errors in a lot of places and uh, there are some errors which you have to uh, foresee because uh, it will happen with uh, a user when they try to use your app as well. So uh, let me give you an example for example uh, because uh, when it's procedure driven uh, programming like uh, you're doing with your command line apps you, you write you know enter number one and then you uh, ask the user to input and then you like enter number two and then you ask the user to input uh, in those kind of cases what's essentially happening is like your program drives what the user is doing but here the user is driving the program they click on the button at any point they wish to they might not have entered the values into uh, variable one and two before they click on add so for example if i click on here right now it, it crashes my app right so uh, this kind of an app crash, how do I prevent that? And how do I even know that an app crash has happened? And uh, you know, uh, what, what can we do with it? So let's try to find out. So I'll just open my app again. And you know, uh, here open something called Logcat. So Logcat is where you get all your logs from your project. So open your uh, app and you know, there's some logs here. Let's clean these logs that have been generated till now. And we'll watch uh, for logs uh, when we click on add. So when we click on add, it crashes. And we get an error here. So the error is that, you know, number format exception for input string empty, okay. And uh, exactly where has it happened? It has happened on this line, which is blue highlighted. So uh, when you're doing UI based programming and when you're doing development, okay, when you, when you graduate from just basic coding and data structures, algorithms, and uh, you know, uh, upgrade yourself from a coder or a programmer to a software developer. What's really important is that you understand that, you know, 80-90% uh, of your time is going to be spent on finding out bugs and debugging them you know, rather than, you know, writing lots of new code. So. Uh, software development is not about writing lots of code it's about knowing when things go wrong and fixing them uh, when, when i teach in in classrooms a lot of times people just have an error like this and they just open their laptop and they're like i know we error uh, error argument. okay and and they don't even read they don't go and read this log cat and, and and what has really happened and something that i really do uh, uh, is like in the initial few classes i just go and stand behind them and like Okay, fine error. I have to do it. I to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to It's just fun, okay? And, and uh, you know, uh, I tell them, okay, fine. Uh, how do you know error? Uh, because, you know, uh, my app is not working. I'm like, fine, so app is not working. So even if you give your grandfather or your grandmother who does not know programming to uh, an, a mobile and app and they try to run it and it does not work, they will also say it's not working. What's the difference between you and your, uh, you know, grandfather or grandmother who has never uh, worked with computers uh, if both of you are saying the same thing that, you know, uh, app needs to run. So, uh, you know, uh, you need to go and read the error. So open your log cat and see what it shows. So uh, they open the lock and I'm like, okay, then just go and read it. It's written in English. It's not written in a language that you don't know. So so they read it and they read this line, uh, Java dot line dot number format exception for input string. Uh, you know, uh, some so like, Okay, fine. So I think uh, that's that's pretty self-explanatory, right? So just go ahead and read where that has happened. So at this line, which is has happened because of this line, which has happened because of this line. So this is called a stack trace. It's like a you know. Uh, 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 root cause analysis like uh, which thing has happened because of which thing etc etc so wherever you find a line which is inside your code uh, so this is this line number 13 so it's happening here in line number 13 because uh, we are doing et var1 uh, dot text dot two string dot uh, two int and uh, this fails uh, two integer will fail here because uh, we can't convert an empty string to an integer now before somebody has typed anything here these two are basically empty strings okay so uh, what can we do about uh, that? So it's, it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, there are two things that you can do. Either you can uh, tell the user to uh, input some data in the uh, items, or you can uh, you know, consider that the default value is zero. You can do either of these things, okay? So let's say I do it. I uh, you know, uh, put this actually inside a try-catch condition, okay? So I... Uh, uh, do this as or I, I can simply do var1 equal to try this catch and I can uh, catch for a uh, number format exception and if there is a number format exception I do 0 here okay so var1 is 0 if I get a number format exception uh, similarly I can do like try this 
and uh, if there is a number format exception so i take zero instead okay how does that uh, look like so this is the zero solution uh, that i first talked about okay so if i do it like this um, and i don't add anything i click on add the result is zero okay this is one way of uh, solving the problem that uh, you do it like this and uh, you know uh, uh, that, that's one way of working things out i'll just reformat like this so it will show up uh, nicely so var1 equal to try i will try to get this value if i don't uh, i'm not able to get it then i catch this exception if i catch this exception then i return zero instead so var1 becomes zero okay this is a way of writing try catch statements a little different from how you write it in java i think slightly different mostly you write it like this you generally would do a try and then inside here you will write var1 equal to this l and inside catch you do var1 equal to zero here you can put the assignment operation outside and you can write the entire try catch together like this anyway uh, that's just a syntactical part and you write code like this you will learn uh, how that's uh, written okay so uh, that's that's one way of doing it um, the other way of doing it is uh, you know showing a dialogue which says you know you have to enter numbers so how do we do that one instead so uh, we'll do it uh, somewhat like this i will write here va, uh, so i'll write uh, val uh, var1 uh, okay uh, which is of type integer uh, which is of type int okay and i will write uh, val var2 uh, which is of type int okay um, then uh, i will write here uh, you know uh, var1 equal to this okay and then here i will write uh, you know var2 equal to this okay so what i will do is i will try to do this two steps okay so i'll try var1 equal to this and try var2 equal to this and if i catch a number format exception here in either of these cases i can do is i can show an alert dialog or something like that now when you write code like this you will not actually be able to compile it because of an error here it says that you know uh, variable var1 uh, must be initialized so if it follows the try path then uh, i actually uh, get some uh, value if i uh, follow the catch path then i don't get some uh, values here okay so what i can do is if uh, the catch condition happens if i write return then this error goes away why does this error go away because it's a very smart feature in the kotlin compiler it can see that if var1 gets initialized and var2 gets initialized in that case only these parts of the code are executed otherwise we basically end up returning okay but before return we have to tell the user something we will do is we will create a dialog we'll create an alert dialog then we'll do dot uh, builder so we'll uh, create an alert dialog it's built like this okay and uh, uh, the alert dialog dot builder is initialized with a context so again i will pass this into the context so everywhere i need context i am passing this uh, because activity is actually a context okay uh, we will talk more about context a little later so uh, you know if you look at uh, main activity it extends from app compat activity uh, okay which extends from uh, fragment activity which extends from component activity uh, uh, which extends from activity uh, which extends from context theme wrapper which extends from context wrapper which extends from context so if you follow the inheritance uh, up and up and up and up and up you will find out that yes uh, activity is basically uh, inheriting from context so wherever we want context we can pass our activity object uh, there and it will work as a context so we can pass this here okay that's all that we need to know about context at this level uh, okay uh, there are, uh, there are a bunch of things inside android which need a context to work and we can pass our activity uh, inside that context for it to make it work so i'll make an alert dialog and i will uh, set a title as uh, you know uh, invalid uh, operation and i will uh, set a message which says that uh, please uh, enter both uh, numbers to calculate and uh, and i will uh, set a positive button uh, which says uh, okay okay and i will create a on click listener here i think uh, okay so Uh, which 
which does nothing really uh, i think uh, it can do is uh, dialog dot uh, dismiss the dialog if uh, that button is clicked okay uh, so some basic uh, you know clean up of the code that i do so it will dismiss the dialog when i click on okay and uh, we can set it to can false as cancelable so people cannot cancel it by clicking on back they will have to click on the okay button only that's the only option that they have and then i will do uh, dot show okay so i'll create a alert dialog which is the title and this message and set a positive button called okay and uh, set cancelable okay uh, so uh, let's do this and see what happens so if i click on add without entering something this dialog comes up which says invalid operation please enter both numbers to calculate and we click on ok and now i have the option to now enter some numbers here and if the values exist here so now uh, the result would get shown okay so this is very uh, important that when we are working with software uh, development projects and you have graduated from writing basic command line programs you understand how to deal with errors because it's part of writing a program errors are not something it's not an afterthought okay this is very important that a lot of people uh, when they are do working on the basic software development they fail to understand this that errors are it's not like you know i write the ideal case of my software and errors you know later on whatever errors will come i will try to figure out what they are part of it so actually handling for uh, inadvertent circumstances and handling for uh, unknown situations is part of writing software because you know uh, there would be some people who would not enter something here and click on add button that's not un uh, that's not uh, abnormal that's not exceptional that's normal some people would always do that like there would be some 5% people who are going to do that okay maybe those people are stupid but that's not the point here the point is that you have to handle the case where some people will click on the add button before they have written something so you need to do uh, something about those people and you have to handle that error so either you can uh, you know silently take the values of zero that's generally called a passive way of handling errors this is called active way of handling errors is that uh, you tell the user that hey Hey, buddy wait uh, it's not that's not how it works you have to enter the numbers okay cool so i think uh, that gives you a good idea of how to handle errors uh, you know uh, i think you can implement uh, strategies like this in you know other apps that you uh, make uh, as you work and you know we will make some more apps and we will see more of such strategies of handling errors uh, ourselves as well